You're listening to Opinions of Beer. I prefer mead. You sent me to hell, Jason. I really just want to make everybody jealous. <laughs> I'm a person from Earth. Listen, what are we talking about? I reckon it sounds like opinions and beer. You can do it, dingo. Oh, I'm good. You're the smartest dumb guys I've ever met. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Opinions and Beer. I'm your host, Adam. Today, it's just me. But don't worry, I'll be interviewing two people on today's episode. But first, let's get to the beer of the day. And today's beer of the day is Leinenkugel's Canoe Paddler. It is a Kolosh style beer. It is 5% alcohol by volume. Has an IBU of 11. A Kolosh style beer is an L. It is a top fermenting yeast. Um, so this is an L. So I'm going to go ahead and try this beer. Now it's an L, but it tastes... It's a very light L. And honestly, I guess it's just how it's brewed. Um... It kind of has a very lagery taste, but I think that's just Leinenkugel, you know, Leinenkugel, you know, their shandies are really w well done, but their regular beers, they're just, uh, their standard non-flavored beers taste a lot like um, something that Budweiser would put out, and I, I think that has a lot to do with the fact that I, I, I believe Budweiser has actually purchased uh, Leinenkugel uh, rather recently, or maybe it's been a, a few years now, but... But uh, Line and Kugel, I'm I'm still gonna give you the praise and say that you are, you started off as a I, I I'm gonna give you the praise and call you a craft beer even though um, you're owned by the big corporations. But <laughs> uh, Canoe Paddler is definitely a um, if you want a more beer tasting beer, Canoe Paddler is the way to go. So I like that Line and Kugel uh, releases this every so often so that you can have a so you can not buy. Budweiser, look cool, and enjoy a beer that tastes like Budweiser, even though Budweiser doesn't taste that good. <laughs> so that's that. I'm I'm gonna give this a solid. Um, well, it's an L, so I don't know if I should. Should I? I if I rank it, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna give this a a canoe missing an oar. That's what I'm going to give this. It's canoe missing one oar. Which you, I think you need two oars to paddle a canoe. Oh, no. Maybe not. Whatever. Here's my interview with Jessica Ross. Followed by my interview with London Seabreeze. So it's just an episode full of great interviews. Hope you enjoy. Here we go. No worries. I'm not. <laughs> Sometimes I just, you know, I, I leave the settings exactly the way I left them. And I come back every time I come back. It seems to have changed. I I know this is why I'm actually the being a guest on your podcast, and I don't have my own podcast right now, right? No, I know it's it's I've um, I've hosted a lot of shows and you know, a lot of stuff where you go to the studio and the producer has to do a bunch of different things and. I know how it is. Yeah, and uh, so uh, let me tell you a little about the show. This is Opinions and Beer. We uh, <laughs> uh, most recently we've 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 fallen down a rabbit hole of interviewing um, independent filmmakers and even major filmmakers, actors, directors, and and uh, people of interest that made you know documentary. It's just been fun. It's been really fun uh, traveling down this rabbit hole. It became a it became a burden trying to keep up with all the. Uh, uh, messages, and that's why I went ahead and decided to create a that uh the IMDb listing, <laughs> so just so just so I can just look through a a little list instead of a instead of a however many messages and stuff that I get. So yeah, so yeah, makes it a lot a lot easier. I'm sure. Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. So now I'm I'm gonna do my best uh to to just uh, solo it with you if that's okay. Yes, definitely. Okay, so uh, so Miss Jessica, I've got, I've got seven quick questions before we get into the the, uh, the brunt of everything. We before we get into everything, I got seven quick fun questions for you. Okay. Okay. It's, it's rather a uh, simple, simple questions, <laughs> simple answers. Okay. Mhm. Mm Favorite color. I would have to say turquoise. Favorite movie. 
uh, the Devil Wears Prada. Favorite musical artist? Gosh, that's a tough one. You know, there's so many. Gosh, I'm really, let me think about it. Well, growing, you know, growing up, I was in love with Madonna, and gosh, I used to listen to all the boy bands. And I'm trying to think now. I have to really pick, like, one artist now. It's going to, gosh, it's going to take a minute. Um, you know, I, I really love Adele's voice. I think she's very talented. So I guess you can, I wouldn't call her my favorite artist, but I do love her voice. Okay. Okay. So, we, <laughs> so oh, gosh. Uh, but, yeah, I actually, you know, maybe right now, I probably don't even have a, gosh, let me try to think. Do I really even have a favorite musical artist? I I just, you know, I listen to a little bit of everything right now, I have to tell you. I just kind of go on Pandora. So I just say I, I kind of like a little bit of everything, a little bit of EDM and Top 40, and I'm good. Okay, uh, Burger King or McDonald's? You know, I have to say neither because I am mostly vegan. <laughs> so. <laughs> so neither. Good choice. That's the yeah. best choice. It probably is good for your health, right? It's a, tr <laughs> a trick question. <laughs> Uh, favorite superhero? My favorite? Well, gosh, I would have to say, I mean, Wonder Woman, because, hello, she's, you know, a good female role model, and um, I dressed up as her many years ago for Halloween, so I have to say I love Wonder Woman for sure. Favorite Nickelback song? <laughs> is, is this an oxymoron, or is this... <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> well, I... <laughs> So, gosh, you know, can I, I'm going to have to Google that one, actually. Do I have some time to go on the internet? <laughs> I know, they, they, they have that one song from, like, like 15 million years ago. I think my mom listened to it, and it was like, it might even not, but I think it goes, like, you remind me how how I really am or something. Yeah, like, yeah. What? Are, are you trying to say that Nickelback is mom rock? Uh, no, not at all. I mean, everyone can appreciate Nickelback. No matter who, right? So, I mean, moms, dads, you know, grandparents, right? Now you're neighbors. Anyone over uh, 45, I guess. Yeah. Something like that, right? <laughs> Music's for everyone, no. <laughs> so. uh, favorite Illuminati meetup location? Yeah, gosh. Well, gosh, you know, for all the meetups that I go to, I'm going to have, can't just, I can't really. <laughs> Where do you get this question? Where do they meet up? Actually, can you inform me so we can pick one? Oh no, I don't know. That was a trick question. I was trying to get you to spoil the beans, but darn it. Um, okay, okay. Well, well, sadly, I'm I'm not in the Illuminati, so I can't really. Oh, not yet. This. Oh, you're not saying they haven't contacted you yet? Or maybe, maybe I just haven't gotten their message. It might it might be in one of my spam folders, or just haven't gotten around to it. Right? <laughs> it pops up in a spam folder. <coughs> That'd be funny. Yeah. Okay, that's how it works. But anyways, uh, <laughs> so that was just a little fun, <laughs> fun questions. So <laughs> let's move on to the to real stuff. Uh, tell me, tell me about yourself. Tell me about your background. Where do you come from? How'd you grow up? What led to you? What led to you to pursue the entertainment industry? Well, I, I guess it really helps you know, growing up in Southern California. I was born and raised in Southern California, just outside of Los Angeles. And yeah, I grew up in the entertainment industry, and I was always exposed to it. And I think just you know, living out here, you're exposed to it all the time. And because of that, I just something I've, I've always been interested in fashion and acting and you know um, publicity. And so I majored in marketing at Cal State Northridge, where I also took acting classes during college. And um, I did a pretty well-known movie in college. And so that's kind of like how I got into acting. And then when I graduated. In addition to acting, I started working in casting, and so I was casting for a lot of various reality shows, which was, you know, really interesting and exciting, and, you know, of course, you meet a lot of inter interesting people, um, and you learn a lot as well for your acting career, and then afterwards, let's say I took a little break from acting and moved to Miami, which was an adventure and a lot of fun, um, and when I moved back to California, I started working a lot in public relations. My first major client was the Kardashians TV home. And I was able to get them, you know, all over the internet, um, over like 50 media placements, like on TMZ and just numerous other outlets. And then um, since then, I've been working in PR, and then I got back into acting, doing some reality shows and um, hosting, and you know, just so many different things I've been working on. And um, currently, I'm 
in the process of filming something called Malibu Crush uh, with, so with a director, and um, once he moves uh, to the U.S. from Australia, we'll be shooting that very soon, and I'm also working on something called iTalk Events, which is debuting April 12th, and I'm going to be one of the speakers there as well, so I'm um, really excited about that. So, uh, tell me a little bit more about these projects that you've worked on in the past. Like, uh, I know you said something, you worked on a big thing uh, in college, and uh, you also talked about the uh, the fashion stuff. I know you did a fashion show, but tell me a little bit yeah. more about the uh, all these projects you've worked on. Yeah, I guess uh, there's, you know, I said so many different projects. So, the first movie I did, um, pretty major movie in college, was called The Boys and Girls Guide, and you know, it was a crazy comedy um, about a bunch of people in the party scene, and... You know, so any kind of film, when you do any kind of film, you really have no idea what's going to happen to it. And it ended up, you know, being on video and screening um, at the Chinese Theater in Hollywood Highland and you know, having billboards up. And, you know, when it was out, people several times have recognized me. So it was, you know, really exciting, I think, to really just get your foot in the door in Hollywood and, you know, learn about going on red carpets, what it takes to do publicity actually, you know, filming and being on set in any kind of film, you really see so much. So you learn about production and you learn about, you know, just learning, like doing your lines in different ways and how so many times, like when you're acting, the script is almost irrelevant. Because a lot of times there'll be a scene on the script and when you actually get to set, everything's completely changed around. So it was such a learning experience. Um, and, you know, it, it really like brought everything together for me and really... I guess really made me realize how much I love acting and how much I love the whole you know industry. What have been some of the most uh, challenging aspects of all this? Well, I mean, of course, the acting a challenging aspect is you know just booking. We never know. I like I film so many different jobs, and you never know what's going to take off and what's going to not take off. So the most stressful thing is it's very unpredictable. Like it, you know, you can do something and. I've done, you know, pilots for, you know, major networks and absolutely nothing happens. And then, like, I did any kind of film in college that goes in the Chinese theater. So it's, like, it's so difficult to figure out, like, okay, what should I do next? You know, what's going to happen to the work that I'm doing? And, you know, what, which of my projects is going to take off? So that's really stressful for sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I got, I'm, I'm definitely worth it. With with the, the I'm definitely there with you when it comes to the uh, the unpredictability of of all this entertainment the entertainment industry as a whole and uh, wondering what people will cling on and what people are gonna you know uh, act and react to and stuff like that especially when you put you, there's so many people out there putting in so much hard like yeah. hard work hard crazy work putting out good yes. good content but the thing is it's so over it's almost it's almost oversaturate oversaturated and just the the algorithms of how it's put out you know you just it's just the luck of the draw when it comes to you know if you get seen and and, I, and that's very true and that's why like having doing publicity and putting yourself out there and, you know, going to a, events um, and, you know, just like I said, doing interviews like this and everything is so important because there is a lot of competition. So you have to make yourself stand out. I mean, like when I first started, social media wasn't really popular back like 10 years ago. And now it's so important. I mean, my agent is telling me to get more followers. So there's so many different things. Like there's so much more work to it than people think. But just even building your followers takes forever. And that's just right. And that's just a small part of everything. <laughs> like, I can't even get the ones I have. Like, <laughs> what's weird about podcasting, you know, uh, used to, I, we, did a, we did a show called The Beer Guys a while back, and we, we actually had a pretty decent size following and fans, and they would send us money and stuff like that. And, oh, wow. uh, and that, kind of, uh, that kind of went under because, uh, so, you know, whoever went to college, and so we had to just went ahead and stopped doing the show, and we wanted to, I wanted to bring back something. Uh, bring something back and I'm, I'm back on this doing this little podcast thing it's way different than what we were doing and uh, and I can see that the whole world's listening except for maybe three states <laughs> I can see you know I can sit there and look at the, st the statistics and see you know what states downloading the episodes and what not listening in but I can't get these mother to subscribe to nothing I can't get them to subscribe to my Instagram or my Twitter I'm like what is going on guys but apparently that's just just how the uh, podcasting world is is they just the uh, podcast listeners like those that audience they're, they're just not big uh, social media followers like they'll I didn't know that they'll, okay, it's interesting 
they'll listen. Like, I mean, they'll listen and they'll. Uh, well, I have a few people. Like, I think we had a uh, we had Philip Andrew on, and you know, he got followers from doing our podcast. But we, but they won't. Come, they don't want to expose themselves to us. It's like, what's going on? You're killing us, guys. Oh my gosh! I know it's social media. You have to like sponsor posts now, and you have to like. I, that's like a lot of people I know. They actually sponsor posts so that they can get more followers. And um, yeah, that's really important. Also, to like have contests and giveaways, and yeah, it, like I feel like social media isn't free anymore. Like you literally, if you have a business or show or movie, in addition to updating your social media, I think you also have to sponsor posts as well too. And you know, do all that annoying stuff. <laughs> So tell me a little bit more about your upcoming uh, film that you're doing with the Australian director. Yeah, so I'm working a film with, um, well, with James Pratt, and it's called Malibu Crush. And, of course, it you know, takes place in Southern California, and it's kind of like a young adult um, comedic drama. And um, I'm looking forward to it. You know, we've, we've been trying to get this together for a while, and actually what's taking so long is that the director um, you know, is, goes between Australia and Los Angeles and, and is working, you know, on the um, with green card and all the immigration stuff, which takes forever. So we've been trying to film this for a while, um, and um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward. We should be shooting that around the summer, and um, what I have even much sooner. If you're going to be in Philadelphia, um, I'm doing something called I Talk Events, and it's super exciting. There's going to be so many incredible business leaders um, for entertainment and the corporate world. And um, it's going to be like a nightclub setting. It's a little bit like TED Talks, but more interesting and fun. So everyone gets to say a nine-minute speech, and there's all different topics. Um, so it's really great for people that are looking to advance their career and listen to some really cool speakers and get like a TED Talk um, type of you know education, but that's more fun and exciting and you know laid back and more of a party setting than okay, you're sitting, you know, in a conference room. Um, so it's, and it's at the Kimmel Center, which is a beautiful, I don't know if you've ever been there before, but it's a beautiful um, performing arts center in Philadelphia. So super excited about that. I'm in the process of creating a really cool speech, actually guiding people as to how they can do their own publicity and social media um, to help, you know, advance their career, whether they're actors or authors or, you know, um, musicians or you know business people looking to um get publicity yeah that sounds really cool and I, i've actually never even I, I don't think i've even heard of i talk until you said something well, well it's actually the first one so that's why okay <laughs> my bad i know no it's, it's a premiere event it's actually the first one but you know, there's there's other stuff similar you know um but this but well, like i said there's other stuff with similar names but this really stands out because who's uh, it is, who's putting this together so it's put together by Jen Montague, and she's the latest putting it together. And our headlining speaker is Desiree Rogers. And um, this isn't one of those. Uh, this isn't one of those fire festival things, is it? Oh no! <laughs> no, definitely not a fire festival. Okay, just yeah. just making sure. <laughs> this is the real deal. They actually, I actually look. You can look up the Kimmel Center, and it, you know it's it's um in the middle of Philadelphia, so you can actually call call them and you know there's no tents they actually um encourage people to stay at the hotels nearby or uber and stuff. you <laughs> mean no oh you mean to... outside on the patio at the hotels nearby you yeah. have a little uh, like tp <laughs> set up and everything huh? <laughs> no 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 grilled cheese and tents for people now <laughs> definitely there's actually you know there's a dinner option i think it's like for an extra fee which is like a, a nice three course dinner <laughs> but like i said no styrofoam and <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think like you know if that was in the United States, a fire festival like that one have been they would have been able, they would have been caught really fast. <laughs> and so you're uh, you're you're giving a speech at I talk. You said yes. I'm doing a I'm doing a speech exactly yes, and um, I'm looking forward to it. You know, it's it's going to be really exciting and really informative. I said, yes, I told you, it's, it's, it's really going to be about, I mean, there's several different things. Um, my topic is like change and innovation. So I'm really talking about how I transitioned, you know, from working, um, having a stable full-time PR job to now both doing PR and acting 
and everything that goes along with it. And then also to how to do your own social media and public relations to advance your career forward. So it's, it's yeah, and it's, it really is about like my personal story, like, you know, how I started taking acting classes and how I dealt with my fear of, you know, going to acting class and being in college and being like the least experienced person, but still, you know, having a confidence to um, go on stage and, you know, be in one of the most difficult acting classes in town. So I talked about that and um, then going to talk about, like I said, just all the different ways to get yourself out there and the different resources to help yourself get interviews and help yourself get more followers. So, so. Are, are you going to be uh, giving this speech while everyone's like raving and, you know, dropping acid and stuff? Or? Party? Oh, no, no, there's no, this is not like a rave. You said or, there was party in this, it'd be club a party. party. Well, it's like a party, you know, with people having a few drinks. Like a, oh, like like a, like a professional party. Yeah, I, well, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 yeah, exactly. It's kind of like almost, um, like, I would almost call it like a, a like a, a, like a red carpet event almost, but combined with informational speakers. So it's like a classy, fun party and a, and a nightclub setting. But and now, now don't think professional like an I talk. I mean, not an I talk, but like when I'm talking about a, like a TED talk, you know. But more just like a fun, but not crazy, insane going to a festival or going to you know. There's a happy medium with things. <laughs> so I think this is like the happy medium where, like I said, it's not a TED talk, but it's not Coachella or you know the Fire Festival either. <laughs> so. Well, darn. <laughs> there, you know, but but there might be, you know, there's plenty of places afterwards. I, I, I actually, you know, I have not partied in Philadelphia yet. Have you partied in Philadelphia? I have not. Okay, <laughs> so I don't know exactly how. Maybe some of our listeners can tell us um, how the how the scene is out there. And I'm, I'm just, I'm really excited, and I'm hoping for nice sunny weather. So they say it's always sunny in Philadelphia, and hopefully, um, <laughs> it lives up to its title. So we shall see. Um, what are some of your uh, your uh, your big your short term and long term goals within the next five years? Gosh, well, there's so many. I mean, uh, my short term goal is to really book my dream acting job, um, and my long term goal. Some of my long term goals include I'm doing a petite fashion line that's also vegan because I really do care about animals. I also would like to invest in real estate in the long term because I feel like renting is such a waste of money. So, and I also would like to open up a business um, and um, and also to get another place back east. I really, would, my goal is actually to live in several different cities. I think it's great because I have so much family on the east coast, but I do love the weather on the west coast. So, I um, would like to definitely get a place in Miami a few months out of the year. So yeah, that's a few of my goals that I have. Yeah, the east seems the east is very uh, humid and muggy, so I can assume <laughs> I can see why the west the the weather in the west coast is a lot better. Yeah, so no, I I feel like and I've been all over the country and I've lived in Miami before and I just I feel like the weather in California really is the best. I mean, everywhere that I've been, whether it's Vegas, Miami, New York, or everywhere in between, there's just no place like California or Southern California when it comes to the weather. Right. So, uh, how long have you been vegan? Gosh, I have been vegan for a little bit over five years, and I started off being vegetarian. Um, and, you know, then I, I started off because it's obviously very good for your health and for your weight and all that stuff. And then I started watching a lot of those videos about what goes on in factory farms, and, you know, it's really heartbreaking to see what the animals go through. So, after watching those videos, because, I mean, I... I always would, I was always in a dairy, you know, cheese. I mean, who doesn't love pizza and stuff like that? So after I became vegetarian, I still eat a lot of dairy, but I'm telling you like those videos where even the animals that are used for dairy and eggs, I mean, they're still killed and they're still tortured. So that inspired me to go vegan. And I feel, I feel so much better. Um, and I have been the same weight probably since around high school. I can still wear my clothes from high school. So I do think that, you know, being vegan not only helps animals, but it really, if anyone's looking to lose weight um, and, you know, have a flat stomach and become vegan, I'm telling you, it's, it's so good for, for your health and your weight and for animals. That's a, and actually, that's another reason why, also, is not just the college thing, it's just we, kept, we couldn't find uh, 
there are a lot there's a lot of beers out there to, to review and try and some of those beers include uh they have honey in them and all kinds of stuff and he couldn't uh my friend went vegan and he couldn't do the show anymore because we had, there's too many beers that with unknown substances in them oh i didn't even okay i didn't even think of that yeah it's because like wine and beer so it typically in a show is everyone drinking beers because i obviously thought yeah, it's, it's beer in the title is so is it usually like when it's on tv is everyone sitting having a beer and talking or oh I, oh yeah well it's usually like a beer like a like that we usually review craft beer and we uh we attach it to the episode and whatnot oh that sounds that sounds like fun and what's your uh, and I, where are you first where are you recording from we are recording in the uh southeast texas wow wow okay, okay. i've been i've been in texas before i'm, I'm not i've been we're, in we're, austin we're mm-hmm. pretty we're pretty close to houston um yeah no, very cool and i was gonna gonna say but so and there's a lot of good craft beer out there because out here in la there's definitely a pretty big scene for that yeah uh it's there's definitely a a, a texas craft beer scene uh texas laws are very weird though and we can't get we can't get the reason why the, the texas craft beer scene is so large or so many different ones is because we can't get any from other states unless they go I through didn't know that. yeah unless Wait. they go Unless they go through like the uh, the big the big companies like Budweiser and Miller, we we can't uh, we can't get them. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, there's a one of the one of the bigger craft uh, brew companies in the area have been trying to uh, campaign to uh, get the law changed because it's uh, because the Texas market itself is becoming oversaturated. Now it's like you know Texas companies uh, versus each other. Where uh, they they would like to see a flow of more from others, you know, other areas and states and stuff like that. So. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say because I, I thought yeah, theme of this podcast, all about beer, and um, <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's that's a cool, you know, cool little title. <laughs> it was just something simple and ba- we 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 want we wanted to have a radio show, but uh, podcast kind of required you to have some kind of a uh, shtick. And so uh, we used to review beer, and I was like, oh, let's just review beer again and then uh, do a radio show after. Right. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, good idea. I know people have, have a beer and listen to some interviews, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Goes hand in hand. Oh, yeah. Uh, do, you, do you drink any, uh, any beer? Yeah, I, I, I do, yeah, I'm probably more of a vodka drinker, but I do, I do drink beer, yes. I I. I like, I gosh, I love Heineken. That's probably in terms of beer. I've, I've always liked Heineken. I feel like it's light and refreshing. Um, and, um, yeah, it doesn't have, like, the strongest taste. So I do. And, gosh, in college, you know, everyone used to drink Corona in college. I saw a lot of Corona. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, for me, like I said, I am definitely more of a vodka person. Um, so... So I, I feel like, yeah, vodka is definitely um, it because you can mix it with so many different things and stuff like that, and it's more sweet. But I actually do, and I'm going to tell you the name of this beer. I have this delicious beer that I got in an event, and I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's called Primas Mural. Uh, and, no, I haven't heard of that one. Well, you should really should try it. It's, uh, it's, it's admirable that you know the, the whole vegan veg, uh, the vegan aspect is really cool. Uh, you know, and uh, I know a lot of people are going the vegan route. I would go vegan if uh, Peter would stop sending me spam to my cell phone all the time. Uh, but <laughs> but now now I can't go vegan as part of a protest against them sending me spam. <laughs> Oh my god, that's that's hilarious! Like, you're like, well, you know, maybe you need to tell them that. Say, look, you know, your spam is doing the opposite. I did, I did. I sent them messages. I respond to them, and they said they're like, oh, put this to stop, and I put that to stop, and they keep doing it. They lied. They lied to me. I don't trust Peter no more. <laughs> well, that is, that is too funny. That and that that whatever they're they sounding, what just like text bug, you need to go vegan. Let me guess, or no, it was like recipes. yeah, yeah. It's, it's a our, our buy buy our shirts and stuff like that. I'm like, I don't want to buy your shirt, damn it. <laughs> oh my gosh, maybe what he needs to do is give you like some free coupons to some you know some free like vegan food and um. 
that that should convince you. Do they have a lot of vegan food in Texas, or? Uh, probably not. I don't think. <laughs> so. I don't think uh, so. I think I think they're uh, they're a lot they're anti-vegan here for some reason. I would say, yeah, just just a little, yeah. Just just I think in general, like like outside of a lot of major cities, or they look at you like you're. I'm gonna go to Philadelphia and try to find a vegan Philly cheesesteak. So wish me luck on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure a lot of I think a lot of big a lot of big cities are definitely adapting more. I think I bet you I bet you uh, Austin had a lot of uh, vegan air, uh, restaurants. Yeah, I think they do. I think that's like the only place in Texas they can probably get good. Oh vegan yeah. Food. yeah, yeah. The Every, rest of Texas are like, um, no, go somewhere yeah. else. Oh yeah, like, they, go back to LA. <laughs> definitely, a, they definitely have a southern mentality down here. So <laughs> southern mentality. Uh, but but yeah, so. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, so I'm yeah, it's just a, a lot, a lot of the I'm looking forward to and so much um, going on and everything though and um, so so yeah, and I guess I, I don't know, did I talk about my Instagram and everything or yeah, t- give us a little bit, yeah, give us a little bit more. Whoa, 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 whoa. okay, actually, I, I, my bad, I saved that for the end. I have one more question and then we can do closing and you can give me anything that we might have missed. Is that cool? Oh yeah, no worries. I know I didn't even know. I wasn't sure. Yeah, I wasn't sure exactly the format of this. I'm so um, sorry. No, it's no, it's cool. It's it's open topic. You can you can spatter and tell us that we're dumb and everything, and it'd be fine. Uh, no worries. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. Okay. Uh, uh, what would you say to anyone as advice that may be pursuing a future in the entertainment world? What are some things that maybe you wish someone would have told you? Because you know, a lot of our listeners are in fact they're up and comers. They're you know. Uh, you know, like independent filmmakers, like I said, they're they're just starting. They just released their brand new film and stuff like that. Uh, what are some advice you'd give to these people that want to be in this world? I mean, I would say first of all, it takes a lot longer than you know people think. So, the first advice, first piece of advice is to definitely be patient. Is that if you're expecting to make it in a year or two, you're going to be in for a big surprise because it's so competitive. And so, you really should have like a long term plan and really expect to, you know, be a part of the industry for many years before you see any sort of, you know, success. Um, And then the second, of course, would be to network. I think it's, you really need to network, put yourself out there, meet as many people as possible. And um, the third, you know, is just to really have the never give up type of mentality, because like I said, you're going to deal with a lot of rejection and a lot of people telling you no, and you work on so many projects that don't make it, but then you get that one project that that you know becomes successful and then it's all worth it so that would just definitely and also too i would say is like whatever hometown you're in nowadays because there's so many opportunities with our phones and our cameras to you know make a youtube channel build your social media followers put videos of yourself out there so like i said because nowadays with technology you don't need to live in la and new york to get started and i really think to to get started in a smaller market you're dealing with less competition so to really like if you live in a small town Every city in this country, you know, has some local productions, local commercials, local film. So start locally um, before you move to Los Angeles and build a portfolio in your hometown. So that when you get to L.A. and it's so much more difficult, you're prepared more and you have work behind you. Says you, your hometown is L.A. <laughs> I know. See, I didn't have that option. I just, I just literally, you know, <sighs> jumped in with the sharks. You and your uh, <laughs> California privilege. <laughs> no, I'm you know, there's a good, I have to say, there's there's a blessing and a curse with it. So, <laughs> so the funny thing, you know, because like, with a, lot, a lot of my, for example, uh, you know, I also do publicity. So with my clients, my first step is I go to their hometown media. Well, for me, my hometown is LA. So I don't have the small hometown outlets that are just be like, okay, sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll feature you. <laughs> so. <laughs> but the cool thing is obviously too it is nice to um and to have not had to move across the country and you know um to be familiar with the area already and be familiar with los angeles before i started out <laughs> so, especially it's a, it's a crazy town and you know it takes a lot to it takes a long time to learn it so i was glad that i knew my way and um yeah and um but hopefully that advice is helpful yeah. Oh yes, it was. That's actually, you know, it, it, all advice is helpful. I found all advice is going to help somebody, you know. Yeah. But uh, yes, hey, sure. it's it's been awesome to have you on and talking with you. And 
Well, yeah. Jan, Bro Jan Brober, I, you, have you seen that? You've seen that documentary. Which which documentary is she in? Or? Uh, Abducted in Plain Sight. No, I've heard of it though. Oh yeah, it's intense. It's pretty nuts. Yeah, I uh, know. And so and um and she was one of the actors in the documentary, right? Or was she? I said was she, was she the subject or when she was one of the actors? She was the, the subject. Wow. That yeah. must have been a, I have to listen to that. That must have been a really fascinating interview. Oh yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. And she was real cool. She was real nice and it was real nice talking to her and nice person and she has, she knows she has a big movement right now and I just want to I like to plug it on our episodes because it's a big movement of how she's just, you know, trying to stop just child this child trafficking and the, you know, this uh, you know, people that are take it take they take advantage of families and and uh, do horrible things to kids and oh, it's so uh, awful. No, that's so awful. That that's really, really, really awful. And especially, you know, um, like you know, anything to do with kids, it really touches my heart. Actually, I have a PR client named Wes Isley, and he's a magician. And he always um, does. He volunteers at children's hospitals and does like free magic for kids. So to help kid, to help kids that are sick and in the hospital and help make their day better. So that's really cool. That. That she's, you know, that she's working with kids and, you know, trying to help kids as well. Because I even, you know, I said, I have clients and I always encourage my other PR clients to do charity work and especially with children. So I have to listen to that episode. So uh, if, there, if there's anything, if there's anything that you feel we left out that you would like to plug, talk about, chat about, let me know and we can do that now. Yes, well, I would say, first of all, I'd love for everyone to follow me on Instagram, and I will follow you back. My Instagram is Jessica Ross Official. Um, and then also, too, if you're going to be in the Philadelphia area April 12th, I would love for you to attend iTalk and check out all the incredible speakers as well as myself. And you can get your tickets at italkevents.com. And it was so lovely to connect with everyone and I really hope um, to be on your podcast again sometime soon. Heck yeah. It's fun having you on. Uh, yeah, it's fun having you on. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And yeah, 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 have a wonderful day. You too. Bye. Okay, bye. And now my interview with London Seabreeze. Here we go. We have a great little list of interviews, so it's gr glad. I'm glad to be able to add you to that list. Yeah, I'm glad to be a part of it for sure. Uh, so we got a, we got a, a few. We got seven little fun, fun icebreaker questions for you. Okay. Go, so I'm gonna ask you these these seven questions. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Uh, favorite color. Uh, white. <laughs> favorite candy bar. Ooh. Maybe like a, tw a take five. Favorite movie? My movie, The Beach Bum. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Yeah. Uh, yes, of favorite favorite water brand? Ooh, that's hard because right now I am only doing alkaline water. Um, but I really, really like Fiji water. Fiji? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Ryan Reynolds or Zac Efron? Zach Efron because he's in Beach Bone with me, so that's like no competition. Yeah, Zach Efron for sure. Uh, <laughs> I, I have a natural bias. He's on the home team. So right, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, favorite Taco Bell menu item? I don't eat Taco Bell. Oh, that's, that's no Chipotle. Chipotle favorite Chipotle yeah. menu item? Oh, I guess. No, there is like we don't. I don't consume Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Only Chipotle. Only Chipotle. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, Favorite Nickelback song? Uh, okay, you have to you have to help me and like help me figure out if this is a Nickelback song. Is it "Living the Beat Boys" and playing my soul? I want to get lost. No, I don't think road. that's a. I don't think that's, that's not. Nickelback. Oh, that's David Green. <laughs> that's, that's David Gray. That's David Gray. So I don't. You know, I don't think I know any Nickelback song. I may if it's on the radio, but I probably don't know <laughs> if it's exactly like it's them. Okay. That's I know that was by far left. I, I'm completely wrong person. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's good. All good. And you know, some people, 
I'm I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm shocked about the amount of people that don't know uh, Nickelback. Recently. Nickelback. You yeah. might have to ask me my favorite Drake song. See, that's a different world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so Miss uh, London, how'd you? You're you're not. That's uh, you chose that name, correct? Yeah. So actually, um, previous to getting involved in film and in modeling, um, I actually worked in the cosmetology industry. And um, I worked for a salon and spa that the staff was so large that when they hired you in, they made you change your name to make sure there were like no booking errors. So um, this was about maybe back in 2012. So before I even started my job, my name was changed to London. And then all of my coworkers, all of my clients for two years never even knew my regular name. <laughs> so... I always went by London and London was like the alias where I would post like my work and do like promotional things in regards to my career previous to modeling and acting. And then when I transitioned into modeling acting, I just kept the name because some of the work that I do is a little bit different than who I am in my personal life. So it's a way for me to keep a separation between the two. That makes sense. Yeah. That's, yeah. Like, that's pretty cool. It's always cool to yeah. have an alias. It's cool that you were yeah. able to yeah, have that stick. <laughs> Hello? I'm sorry, what'd you say? Oh, yeah, I was just saying it was, it's really cool to have that stick. Uh, so t <laughs> tell me a little bit more about your uh, your background and like where do you come from? You know, how'd you grow up? Yeah, so I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota, the Midwest. Um, I grew up actually doing performing arts. So I'm like classically trained in ballet, tap, dance, and like got into acting. Um, it was all kind of a part of like my upbringing. Um, did a lot of screen well not screen plays but stage plays in minneapolis were really really big on like stage plays and commercials not too much film you don't really see a lot of films being shot obviously not feature films being shot in minneapolis but you will see like artistic short films so i've, I've done some work in that area but um i just recently started branching out to other markets outside of minnesota um what i was more so interested in uh at beginning at least was definitely capitalizing on my model my modeling career and I knew that Minneapolis wasn't going to be the best market for that. So I started looking into New York and then to Miami. And so I started doing a, quite a bit of work in Miami in regards to modeling. And then I, land, I landed the beach bum back in uh, October of 2017. And that was kind of just honestly on a whim. My agent was really pushing me. She's like, you know, she really believed in me. And, you know, she knows my background with, you know, my performing arts background and, you know, me having training and acting so she really wanted me to try out for the role of uh, Matthew one of Matthew McConaughey's love interests and so I did and I ended up getting the part <laughs> that's awesome yeah that's really awesome yeah it's, it's always cool to have a really uh, a really nice support system I know uh, I, that's, I've, I've noticed that a lot with a lot of the people we've interviewed is that their support system is really really great you know that's probably the uh, one of the big catalysts the differences between you know be, becoming successful and not yeah, no, I agree with you. I totally agree with you. Uh, you actually, um, did, was one of your first performances in a play called Black Nati Black Nativity? Yeah, Black Nativity is an original screenplay by Langston Hughes, and then it was later um, pr uh, produced by Lou Bellamy. That's so uh, I was in that when I was pretty young, and then there was a, um, the guest uh, talent they ended up bringing in was actually Jennifer Holliday. So that that was really cool. And how long did you uh, were you in that? That was like almost a duration of three months. Actually, it was quite some time. They usually do it like right around the holiday season. Obviously, hence the name Black Nativity. Um, it's the same idea of like the nativity story of Jesus, um, just given in a black sense, um, but the <laughs> exact same story. Um, but so they usually do it, I believe from like around a little bit around like the end of October into the new year is kind of how that play runs. That's cool. The, uh, yeah. uh so is that one of your first, that's your first role ever or? That was my first role ever. I was, a baby. I was probably like eleven years old around that time. Now, did you uh, did you move from that to modeling, and how long was that gap? Like, when did you start modeling? Yeah, so actually, I started modeling when I was in cosmetology school. Um, they would use me as a hair model a lot of the times. Like, honestly, 
when I was, cause I, so I went and I got into cosmetology school when I was 16 years old, actually. So around that time, I was like an aspiring writer. So I was like, you know, I thought it was really vain to do modeling because I was like, I want people to like find my words beautiful. And I, like, I, I wanted people to find like more beauty in my essence than my aesthetic. So uh, that's kind of where I was mentally. But my instructors kept using me as hair models and then that evolved into like local photographers wanting to use me for different shoots and then local boutiques and then it evolved into like agencies in Minneapolis and then when I seen like like what the potential was for me I just kind of started going after it at that point and of course I like definitely developed a love for it like once I really got into it I just think like being young and not really knowing like where I was or how I felt about things, I really was like, well, I think it's vain to be a model. I think it's like too much, but over time, it's like something I, I really grew to love. And uh, now, did you you wanted to move into acting, or is that all your uh, your agent? No, I I've always wanted to move into acting. I've always like along with me being classically trained in ballet, that we were always doing acting classes when we were younger. Um, you know, as an adult, you kind of start focusing on like what makes you money because you got bills <laughs> yeah. but and and modeling was making me money um i would have loved to you know get into acting even earlier and even now there's so much still that like we're working on we just got word this morning about a potential feature in bad boys 3 so there's oh, definitely nice. things developing which i'm super excited for but i mean at first it was just like the focus on what was making me money and what was helping to pay my bills <laughs> now how does that uh did you did you uh, you you audition for Bad Boys Three? No, actually, I have not auditioned. Um, I just got I just got word about it this morning that um, they wanted me for potentially two scenes. Nothing has been finalized yet. It was a, like more of a direct booking. Okay, well, that's awesome. Yeah. that's awesome. I know. I'm grateful. <laughs> and that's just and that's, that that'd be your your second film. Yes. Yep. Yep. As long as everything gets finalized and we receive, you know, the contract and everything, that'll be the second film. We're, I mean, we just got worried about it this morning. If everything falls through cor correctly, I'll be shooting actually next week in Miami. That's awesome. That's that's badass. I can't. That's what. Yeah. I'm excited know, for you. I'm excited Martin for Lawrence you. Lawrence and Will Smith. Hell that's yeah. going to be amazing. Yeah. In fact, hey, is actually isn't uh, Martin Lawrence is in the beach bum, huh? He is. Yep, he is. So this you, will be the second film we're in together if things fall through correctly. Yes. <laughs> oh, cool. Did, so y'all worked on scenes together in The Beach Bum? No. So in The Beach Bum, because I play a love interest to in Matthew, all my scenes... Well, I should clarify, too, because there's... There's... Um, Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, sorry. Um, because all my scenes were with Matthew McConaughey... Um, what ended up happening is like him and I were the only ones shooting when I was shooting. Um, there are quite a few scenes actually that ended up getting cut from the beach bum, unfortunately. Um, but I, I, I ended up crossing paths with um, Martin Lawrence at our screening at South by Southwest. So that was our first time meeting. We, I believe we all stayed in the same resort, but when I would have breaks from shooting, I was actually going straight home to my family and then coming back um, when I was needed. Okay. Yeah, that's fun. That's fun to be in a living the living the Hollywood dream. Just you know. Yeah, it's cool. It's definitely pretty cool. <laughs> so, uh, so you're sitting around, you're having fun uh, modeling, and mm -hmm. uh, how do you how do you get that role in the Beach Bum? Yeah. So honestly, um, I had a meeting with the head of my agency in Miami, and then um, my agent, who I work with directly. Um, after my meeting, she was like, you know, we have this Universal Studios casting. We'd really like you to go to. Like, can you stay in town any longer? So I just happened to stay in town a little longer. And um, I went to the casting. And I didn't find this out, actually, until, like, a few months later. The casting that I attended was actually, like, the final cut, meaning that the women who were at that casting had gone through multiple auditions to get to that point. And I was just brought in last minute because of the way that my agent was advocating for me. Like, she really wanted me to to be there she was directing myself to um harmony corinne and was really kind of pushing for me and so when i was in there i'm not gonna lie i was intimidated you know like i i don't have a long acting resume there's gorgeous drop dead gorgeous girls who have like credentials to match you know what they're auditioning for and so um i auditioned and i was i was actually one of the first to audition myself and um vanessa marie were the first to audition she's a girl i actually auditioned with um, she's actually in the film as well but we auditioned actually together, and um, 
Harmony Corinne asked me if I was okay with being topless in the film. And I said I was. And um, he asked me to remove my top. And <laughs> I did the, th did the reading over <laughs> topless. And then um, I was told that, you know, I, I was, you know, clear to go back home. And um, I want to say on my layover, on my way home, I ended up getting the message and being told that they were picking between myself and another girl for the part in the film. And uh, a few days later, they confirmed that they had chosen me. That's cool. How uh, yeah. so? How how comfortable is is a scene like that? Um, so I'm really comfortable with my body in real life. I'm not gonna lie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of interesting because a lot of our scenes are shot in the middle of the ocean. And another thing, again, when I say a lot of our scenes, it's because there were scenes that we shot that didn't actually make the film, but the scenes that we were shooting, again, they were in the middle of the ocean, and so we had a set boat, and then we had another boat with the crew on it. So it's like 60, I would say like maybe 30 to 50 people on this boat, and they're watching me. So that was really interesting. I was comfortable um, with Matthew, and I was comfortable with Harmony. Like, again, like with modeling, you're changing in front of people all the time, so it's never anything it's never something to feel uncomfortable about it was just really interesting to have like a separate boat maybe 20 feet out and everyone's looking at you <laughs> that was kind of interesting yeah you say close your eyes damn it no i'm, joking. <laughs> no, I'm just like make sure they look perky you know <laughs> okay <laughs> so uh what was it like working directly with uh, matthew mcconaughey it was a really great experience. It was really, really, like, calming. I definitely thought that I was going to be nervous. Um, when we first got onto the set boat together, he introduced himself as um, his character name, so Moondog. And he was just talking to me and kind of setting the scene. So he was telling me, you know, like, we're supposed to look like we're fresh from making love. And what he did is, so we both had personal assistants, um, actually, on the, on the boat that we, were, that we were filming on. And so he asked his personal assistant for some oil. And he took oil and started rubbing, like, my, the top half of my body, my arms and my back. And it was kind of like a way to definitely make me a bit more comfortable. And obviously, this is, this is now my first time ever interacting with him, period. So I think, I, you know, like, needing that time to just talk before we started filming definitely was very, very beneficial. And then, obviously, like, while we were filming, we were using the sunlight as um, the light for the film. So anytime there was cloud coverage over the sun we would take a break. So there was a lot of really like, you know, personal conversations, professional conversations. We spoke about his family and, you know, the things that they do. And then also he was asking me about, you know, where I'm from and what I'm trying to do. And so it, it was a really, really great experience that I was really, really thankful for. Um, yeah. What, what are some of the, uh, the biggest learning, what are, what are some of the learning experiences you've had while working on the film? Oh, um, I think my biggest thing that I've learned, I wouldn't even say in the film because there's so much surrounding the film and on a production side and a publication side. I think the biggest thing I'm really learning is kind of like the other side of the business, honestly, like, I, I, you know, I've always focused on more so developing myself as a talent. But I'm really realizing that in order to really like make a name for yourself, you have to focus on branding yourself. You have to focus on your knowledge of the business. So I would say more than just the film, the film has introduced me into a different world that I have not been in. So it's like I'm learning more and more about the entertainment industry, but not from a sense of like being the talent, but from a sense of business. So I would say that's kind of like more so what I'm learning right now. I've definitely had to be in contact with um, production myself and figure out certain things. And even when we were done filming, I needed to make sure that my, you know, my name was listed correctly in the credits. And just, it was a lot of different communication points that I actually have never had to deal with before because I've always had someone representing me. But this film put me in a position where I kind of, you know, has definitely had to advocate for myself. Um, and then now with me being in LA, I've got, Nila that I'm working with, so that's definitely been a huge help. That, yeah, it sounds sounds real helpful. I mean, uh, it's really yeah. cool to have you know, because it is hard. You know, like I was telling, um, I was just telling somebody else that you know, is there's just like there's an abundance, an abundance amount of talent and people trying to get their yeah. name out there, and you have to be like that needle in a haystack upon haystack really? upon haystack upon yeah. haystack, you know. And so, uh, and so when you get that I, shot, you got to yeah. take everything you can. You got to learn all you, you have to take every, every advantage you can with everything you're given and use Man. that going forward. Yeah. And what's so crazy is if like, if you were to ask me now, like, I don't, I don't feel like I've 
made it. I feel like I have an opportunity and I need to leverage my opportunity to the best of my ability. Like, like with you, exactly what you're saying, exactly what you're saying about, you know, there being so much talent, there's crazy talent everywhere, but a lot of people are not seen by the right people. And so that is kind of a huge hindrance. Social media definitely is helping out with that a bit more, but obviously like, you know, some people, you know, definitely don't get the exposure that they deserve. And like, you know, even with me having the opportunity of like, you know, my next opportunity going into, you know, bad boys three, still don't know exactly the role that I'm going to have, you know, there, but I'm still developing as a talent, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to be in the positions that I'm in so far, but I'm still looking for like my star role. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Obviously, you're you're going, you know, from The Beach Bum to Bad Boys Three. These are two. I mean, both of these films have big talent in them. Mm-hmm. Uh, are you are you scouting around on more things? Or are you just going from project to project, or do you have other things on the table lined up? Definitely a few other things in 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 the talks of being lined up. Um, my focus mainly as of lately has definitely been taking care of like the premieres that are coming up with the Beach Bomb. Um, like I said, we had our our last premiere actually in uh, South by Southwest in Austin, Texas. I believe there's talks of another premiere in Miami, and then also you know shooting with uh, potentially you know Bad Boys Three. So there's just like so much to sort through. Even with there being other options on the table, I'm definitely looking at prioritizing like what's most important. And like you were saying, being a talent and having talent out there is awesome, but it's like you kind of have to like leverage your point. And so with these premieres, it's kind of like using this time to make sure that like the public is becoming familiar with like who London C. Reese is exactly. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's cool, and you and you have the fun. I mean, that's a that's a unique name. I mean, it's also great to have a unique name. That yeah, people can yeah. people can latch on to, you know. Yeah, definitely. So, um, so is this a uh, is this a full time career for you? The uh, the filmmaking stuff. Are you going to go back to modeling? Are you going to try to balance both? I would love to balance both. Um, like I said, I'm still a developing talent, so I'm I definitely have a regular life. Um, I'm traveling like crazy, but I still have a regular job back at home in Minneapolis. I try to balance actually all three when it comes to modeling and to acting and to my regular life. Definitely would love to be able to focus all my efforts on the modeling and acting combined equally. Um, But as of right now, I mean, as opportunities continue to roll in, definitely I'll be able to, you know, make some changes in my personal life to accommodate my professional life. But right now it's been more like a balancing act between all three, to be honest. What was it like working with the uh, the director? Harmony is so cool. <laughs> so he, I mean, I don't know if, you know, most of your viewers were are familiar with Harmony Corinne, but he has done Kids which is a, a you know older older like classic cult film and then he also did Spring Breakers. So like his whole vibe is like just kind of like a psychedelic cool like laid back vibe and it was funny because when we were on our way to the set boat he had given me like a monologue of like a short version of my lines and so he was like you know just read through that and then we got to the set boat and he was like don't remember anything I just told you to read. Honestly, I just want you to like improvise and you know <laughs> have your own experience with Matthew. I just want it to be natural. So that really put ease on me, especially being like, you know, a newer actress and like being and working with someone like Matthew, you want to make sure you're execute, executing it like to perfection, especially when you're working with also someone like Harmony Corinne, you want to make sure you're bringing their vision to life. But for him to just put it like, you know what, go ahead and improv, that took a whole weight of the world off my shoulders. So <laughs> he is super cool, super lighthearted, um, amazing guy to work for. I mean, if the chance ever came again, I would love to work with him again. Um, and even like just just the way he wrote the film, I, I really can't wait for your viewers to see it. It is just so like just trippy, psychedelic, funny. Yeah. Did you uh, did you improv all your scenes, or did you try to uh, stick to the script a little bit? Um, there was no sticking to the script. It was very very <laughs> much so improv. <laughs> well, that's fun. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. I'm sure I'm sure most act, uh, actors would love to work that way. Yeah, yep, yep. <laughs> you, you know, you constantly hear stories of some people are just so particular. They want you to line by line and motion by motion. I think they were talking about how uh, Quentin Tarantino is really, really like that. Like, if you get anything wrong, he, like, flips <laughs> out and freaks out. So uh, it's I just... 
that's what I mean. As a director, you would, you would, I mean, it's your baby, you know, like it's, it is your birth child. So how it's projected to the public has to be like to your liking. So I could definitely see, you know, a director being like, this is exactly how it needs to be. That's definitely probably hella nerve wracking for most people in my position, working with harmony. Like that was really dope. Just given the fact that it gave me like artistic creativity and freedom as well. So, yeah. So are you, uh, are you so? What, what do you think? I guess you haven't done it yet, but like, uh, are you are you ready? Are you prepared for that director to scream at you and yell at you? <laughs> I am. You know, I, I I definitely have a very very high tolerance. You know, at the end of the day, I know that my focus is a bigger feature. You know, working on bigger films and becoming bigger as a talent myself and I understand that that comes with a lot of like self-discipline and also being able to take you know direction and direction doesn't always come you know nicely or smoothly so my main focus is I can I can I can take away my emotions or my thoughts as long as the job is getting done and the bigger picture is we're working towards the bigger goal in my opinion so like I said my goal is to be you know an a-list artist you know an a-list actress so if if that means that i have to like you know self-discipline and be around someone very strict about you know how they do their film i'm all for that oh yeah yeah <laughs> um my last question was uh was where do you see yourself in five years but you kind of uh you've kind of already said it but if you want to well go to head and, <laughs> and uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna be a household name in five years so that's all I'm focused on. <laughs> definitely going to continue to develop my brand. You know, like I stated, my, my focus is definitely on bigger features and um, having like, you know, really more like predominant roles where people are like, that's London Seabreeze. Um, me being in this film with the beach bum, like I said, that like, you know, some, some, some scenes were cut. So you will see me, um, but I, I, I definitely want to become more of a serious, you know, a known serious actress Could not you, just you know not just arm candy that's great and i appreciate that but i you know i yeah. want to become involved in like you know thrillers or, or horror films just you know something with a little bit more seriousness to it could you uh could you describe some of the scenes that were cut yes <laughs> so there was a snake scene um it's a scene of me and matthew mcconaughey and um I'm massaging his feet and he's playing the drums for me. And while he's playing the drums, the snake is actually around his neck. It's like a yellow and white snake. And in this fil in this in this particular scene, rather, I'm topless. So Matthew's feet are in my lap. He's kind of reclined back. The snake is around his neck. So every time they started filming, the snake would come from around Matthew's neck, slither down his entire body, and come directly to me. So I am like terrified of snakes, to be honest with you. <laughs> and every take, the only reason why they stopped filming was because Matthew could see like I was so uncomfortable. And he was like, you know what? Like he, he, he actually found it comical. He was laughing at me a lot during that scene. And that was one scene that I really feel like I knew wasn't necessarily going to make the film. Only because just, I, I mean, I have a beh behind the scenes of it myself in my phone. And I watch it often and I just laugh because you can see like I could, I could not stay in character. <laughs> Yeah, not at all. <laughs> well, that's funny. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. You have a snake coming at you. And yep. Coming at you in, in topless. So it's like, I'm thinking it's going to bite my breath. <laughs> you, should do, uh, you should do Naked and Afraid. Should be, uh, yeah. Should be your next <laughs> that, That's more at my alley, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Naked and Afraid. <laughs> that would have been perfect for that scene. I, I, and what's funny, too, is in the film, they have me like smoking like a, a, a fake blunt. And so to try to keep my focus off the snake, I just kept trying to puff on the <laughs> But, you know, I, I tried. I was doing breathing exercises. It was not working at all. So, Well, that's that's a funny story. That's good. Good. To, you know, yeah, may, you know, maybe one day, you know, if, if the director allows us, maybe we'll be able to release the behind the scenes of it and we can all laugh. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's really fun to have you on. Uh, is there anything that I left out that you would like to talk about that you would like to mention, you like to plug uh, before we conclude here? No, I would say definitely. I mean, if you're listening to the podcast, definitely find me on social media to keep up with my new projects. Um, 
as of lately, I've been definitely working more so on branding. And so I'll be putting out more of my projects that I'm working on. My um, social media handle is London Seabreeze. Exactly like how everything sounds. Um, no funky spelling. But Adam, I wanted to thank you too for having me on your show. We really appreciate it. Oh, no problem. You know, and uh, hey, when you uh, don't forget the little guys when you're uh, too big, when you get too big for us. Yeah, not at all. And yeah, I wanted to make I wanted to make sure too that um, the listeners know that the Beach Bum is actually coming out March 29th in theaters all across the country. Awesome. Yeah, and this episode should be available uh, March 28th, so it's all gonna be good. Sounds good. All righty, Adam. We really appreciate your time. All right, thank you. You have a good night. You have a good. Okay.